In this video tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at our new drag and drop templates for Photoshop Elements. Now, if you've used Photoshop Elements for a while, you know that under the Create tab, we actually have the ability to create photo books right within Photoshop Elements. And you can print those on your local printer. The problem is, is not only do they limit you the number of different sizes that you have available in Photoshop Elements, but also the layouts are pretty limited. So what we've done is we've gone and developed a whole series of our own drag and drop templates that you can use for any size page layout you want and also has a lot more flexibility in the types of layouts that you can create. And that's what we're going to show you here. So it's a really exciting new product. Now these templates will work on both the PC and Mac version of Photoshop Elements, so no problem there, and they'll work with Elements 5, Elements 6, 7, and 8, just like I'm going to show you here. Now I'm going to be using Photoshop Elements 8 on a PC platform, but if you're using a Mac, no problem, you'll be able to follow right along because it's basically the same program on both platforms. And if you're using older versions of Photoshop Elements, no problem as well because what I'm going to show you here is basically the same process you would use in those older versions of Photoshop Elements. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started looking at these exciting new templates. Now, the first thing I need to do is come into my project bin and choose my drag and drop volume one series of templates. I'm going to select a template to edit. And when I open that template, you can see I have all the drag and drop photo regions available to me, just as if I was using the photo book options here in Photoshop Elements. Now I'm going to switch over in the project bin to a folder of images, and I'm going to begin by dragging and dropping my images. And just that easy, Photoshop Elements is going to drop that image in and automatically resize it to fit these image openings. And I just keep going. And you can see how easy it is to create a great looking layout with very, very minimal effort and very minimal knowledge. I'm just dragging and dropping files. Pretty basic stuff. Now this one here, I am going to resize a little bit using this little slider. And then I'm going to just reposition it and hit the enter key when I'm done and all of my images are in place. Now I do have one more image opening region, but here we're going to do something a little bit different. And this is where I want to show you how flexible these templates can be. I'm going to take this frame layer and I'm going to just move it to the bottom of the layer stack underneath everything else in my layout. And then I'm simply going to use the little transformation handles and make it wider. See now that frame layer fills up the whole thing. I'll go ahead and accept those changes. Now the next thing I want to do is temporarily turn off the visibility of my frame layer just by clicking on the little icon here in the layers palette. And then I'm going to take these image openings and simply scoot them down here a little bit. And then I can fine tune the exact placement with the arrow keys on my keyboard. See, so I just kind of rearranged those a little bit. Now I'm going to turn on that frame layer that I had turned off and I'm going to switch in my project bin over to another one of our products, which are our texture pack for Photoshop Elements. Now this is not part of our drag and drop templates. It is a separate product, but we have some great textures here um, that you can use with Photoshop Elements. And I'm just going to drag and drop a texture file in here and see what it looks like. And there we have it. So it looks pretty good, but we have a black rings around our images and we have a black uh, texture, which may not look so good. So let's try a different one. Let's just try a different texture. Just drag and drop a new texture. And just that quick, it'll switch it out. Now that looks pretty good. Now back over here on the image on the far right, I might just want to lower the fill opacity and I'll just use that for Photoshop Elements and maybe I'll define an exact amount, 50%, and see how great that looks. Now one last thing I might want to modify is I might want to modify these uh, image openings, these circular image openings have a black circle around them and I want maybe want to color coordinate that a little bit. Now you can see that we have all the individual layers that make up these outer rings and I'm just going to double click here. This little FX tells me that I have a layer style applied to this. So I'm just going to click one 
and the layer style dialog box for Photoshop Elements appears. And I'm going to click here for the change the color, and then you actually when I hover over it, it even tells me. So I just click, and then I can grab my eyedropper tool anywhere in my texture. That'll grab me a blue, and then I'm just going to drag it straight down. So I have a darker blue. And that's pretty much it. That's all I needed to do. Now, I'm going to copy that layer style and paste it to these other outer ring layers that I see. So right here in my layers palette, I'm just selecting these and I'm pasting that layer style to the other layers. And I'm doing that just by selecting the layers, right clicking and choosing paste layer style. Now I know you can do that, right? So now the last thing here, these color bar layers up here at the top are what these little fine lines are. If I zoom in here tight, you'll be able to see them a little bit better. See these little black lines? These are all the color bar layers. So I'm going to grab my eyedropper tool and I'm going to set my foreground color to be this dark color of this outer ring. And then on my color bar layer, I'm just going to fill those with that same foreground color. See that? And there we have it. I'm going to zoom back out here. Now, that looks great and it was super super simple to do and certainly better than creating our own templates here in Photoshop Elements. But we want to show you one other thing we can do here and that involves another one of our products which are our elements package for Photoshop Elements. Now these vector design elements are accessed through the custom shape inside Photoshop Elements. So if I come into my custom shape tool and up here in the options bar you can see I have a set of our shapes loaded. Now, when I click on this little bitty arrow to the right, it actually shows me all these photo perks right here. These are all part of our design element package for Photoshop Elements. Now, the one I have loaded right now is our Edge Flourishes Volume 1. And all I'm going to do is take one of these edge files and add it to my layout. Now, if you've never worked with vector design elements, boy, they can really spruce up a layout with just very minimal effort. So we're just going to grab one, and I'm going to drag it out here. And I reposition it. And boom, just like that, we've added a little bit of punch to this layout. And look at how pretty that layout looks. So your scrapbooking pages are just going to look dynamite. And we actually work with certain album companies where we can even offer you discounts when you get ready to produce your album layouts. So there you have it. That's how the drag and drop templates work. And there's some sample files that you can download and experiment before you make that purchase decision. But I know. You're just going to love these templates and show you how you can modify these templates to create dozens of layouts. It's really going to be exciting. So check it out. Check out the sample templates and see for yourself just how easy they are to use with Photoshop Elements. Thanks for watching.